Hey guys, it's Fee, and I am here for a fun video, a very fun video. Those of you who have been watching me for a while know that I'm the tag queen, or at least I used to be the tag queen. Um, I haven't done a lot of tags lately, but there was a while there where I was doing nothing but tags. I've done numerous, like, fee tag fests, and um, any tag I could come across or think of, some I created myself, I, I'm definitely the tag queen. <laughs> But it just dawned on me that there is a tag out there that I saw quite a while back that I never thought I'd be able to do. So being the tag queen, I need to do this tag before I forget because I think it's awesome and a miracle and a blessing that I can even do this tag. Ah, this is the pregnancy tag. I get to do a pregnancy tag. It it just this just blows me away. It does. I know you guys you guys hear me say stuff like that all the time. I mean it. I really mean it. It still doesn't feel real. It just it's still just amazing. Amazing and I know I am so blessed and I'm so grateful. Pregnancy tag. I have all the questions written down. Um the vlog that I found that this was done the, the questions were not in the description. I will put the questions below, so long as I remember, <laughs> just in case anybody else out there wants to do this. Um, I, I went through and wrote them down because they weren't in the vlog that I found. So, I will say this is a lengthy one. It is 37 questions long, so I'm going to try and get through these as fast as I can. You guys know I am long-winded, but um, all right, we're already two minutes in, so let me start. <laughs> Number one... What day did you find out? I found out on February 9th, 2015. Our transfer was on the 2nd, and my beta was that morning, February 9th. That is when I found out. Number two, how did you feel when you found out? I, as I recall, I didn't know how to feel because I had done a home pregnancy test that morning, to try and relieve some anxiety from waiting for the results for the blood test. And I thought I saw something, but I didn't think it was there. And I was kind of upset, but at the same time, kind of holding out hope because I knew that it was possible my numbers weren't high enough because they were beta testing me pretty early. Um, yeah, so I, I had mixed feelings. I had mixed feelings. That's how I felt when I first found out. When I um, actually found out that it was the real deal, I, I was cautiously optimistic. I obviously was happy, but I was also cautiously optimistic just because of my history. Number three, who was with you? Well, if you're asking me who was with me when I took that home pregnancy test and first found out that there might be a possibility there, all of you guys were with me because I did that live <laughs> or as close to live as possible. It wasn't a live feed, but I recorded it and put it up right away. So technically all of you guys were with me. Number four, who was the first person you told? Aside from you guys seeing it, I did make sure that I came upstairs and woke my husband out of sound sleep at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> and told him before I uploaded that video. <laughs> Number five, how did your family react? My family was ecstatic. The Most of them know everything we had been through. Some of them know more than others, but they all knew that we were on a journey. So of course they were ecstatic and sending prayers up right away in hopes that this would be it. Number six, are they helping with baby names? Not really, not really. Um, we did get a couple of random ideas from Donnie's sisters and family that did kind of help us down the path to naming DJ because of the whole junior versus not junior thing. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, watch my name reveal. So they did give us some ideas here and there, but really the name itself, we, we figured out on our own. Number seven, have they bought anything for baby yet? Every time I see my sister-in-law, somebody has something. So yes, absolutely. Um, most of the time it's little things, um, clothes, cute little shoes, uh, of course, Don Donnie has three sisters, and of course all three of them are going to be fighting for favorite aunt. So I already have a bib and a onesie that has to do with who the baby's favorite aunt is going to be. So yes, I, I they are definitely getting stuff for baby boy. Number eight, have they called to check on you? 
Yes, um, and more than just family, friends also. I, I, I'll get phone calls. In the beginning, I was getting texts and phone calls all the time. Um, I still am. I still am. So, yes, they definitely check on me. Number nine, what is your due date? My due date is October 21st. And for you geeks out there, I'm going to show my geek card. October 21st is known as Back to the Future Day. October 21st, 2015 is Back to the Future Day. That is the day, despite all of the Facebook spoofs, that's the real day that in the movie Back to the Future 2, they went forward in the future and went to October 21st, 2015. Now, if I give birth at 4.29 p.m., we may have to rena rename the baby Emmett for um, Dr. Emmett Brown. <laughs> Because 429 is actually the time, the actual time that that Back to the Future journey took place. So it it I'm sure that probably will not happen. Um, October 21st probably won't happen because it's it you don't always obviously give birth on the day of your due date. But I still think it's kind of cool that my due date is known as Back to the Future Day. <laughs> Number 10. How far along are you? I, right now, am in my 26th week, but I believe I'm going to be posting this for you guys next week. So when you see this, I will be 27 weeks exactly. Number 11, have you had any ultrasounds? Oh my God, I have had more ultrasounds than I could even attempt to count. Um, when this was an IVF pregnancy, so when you first start out, there was all kinds of ultrasounds just to get the eggs growing. To monitor you to figure out when they were going to take the eggs out to transfer the eggs back in um, after I did get the BFP I got ultrasounds weekly for like the first 12 weeks it was it was pretty amazing it really was number 12 are you wanting to find out the sex or waiting until birth well we did find out the sex it is a boy um, I, I was pretty impatient. I, I wanted to know. <laughs> I, I am not strong enough to wait until birth. Those of you who are able to do that, you, you are more woman than I am because it would drive me out of my mind. Um, if we hadn't done PGD testing, which we did in the beginning to rule out a lot of chromosomal issues, if we hadn't had to go that route, I probably would have done the panorama test at 10 weeks to figure out the sex of the baby. But um, we didn't do that because the panorama test does a lot of the same things with checking for chromosomes and issues and whatnot, and we already had that covered. Technically, with the PGD, we put two embryos in, and at the time of transfer, we knew one was a boy and one was a girl, but because only one took, we got to find out like the rest of the world as to what it was that we had. So, um, yes, we definitely found out the sex as soon as we could. I believe it was at 20 weeks which actually was a little late. There's a lot of people out there that find out anywhere between like 16, 17, 18. I found out at 20 weeks. I was definitely going crazy. <laughs> Wanted to find out as soon as possible. Number 13, what do you want? Um, boy or girl wise? Really, it didn't matter to me. Really, it didn't. Um, everybody kept asking me what I thought baby was, and I, I honestly didn't have an opinion. I think there was some fear factor just from past histories and not wanting to guess that may have been involved there, but really I, I had no clue and I was perfectly fine with boy or girl as long as baby was healthy. That was the important part. Number 14, what does daddy want? I don't think daddy really cared either which way. Donnie really was the same way. He, he, he just wanted a happy baby. Happy, healthy baby. And, uh, I, you know, from the very beginning, he swore up and down this was a girl, though. He just had this instinct that it was a girl. He did end up being wrong. It is a boy. But other than that, I don't think it really mattered to him either which way. Number 15, have you had your big ultrasound? I'm assuming they mean, like, the anatomy scan. Yes, I had that at 20 weeks. And I believe I will have another longer ultrasound but not as long as the anatomy scan probably somewhere around 32 i believe but that's not scheduled yet number 16 about the birth who is going to be with you well donnie's definitely going to be with me past that i haven't really decided um i may get a doula i'm not sure if i don't i am definitely probably going to have some kind of backup for donnie you know in case he gets tired uh, you know, all of us first-time moms are always a little concerned about what daddy's going to be able to deal with. Uh, he seems to think he's going to be fine, but 
I don't know. I don't know. I guess time will tell. I definitely want somebody else there with him for numerous reasons. I just have not quite decided if it's going to be a doula or if it's going to be a friend or a family member. I have not decided on that yet. Number 17, are you going to videotape it? You know, prior to this journey, I, I always told people, you know, if I ever get pregnant, anything ever works, I don't want anybody having videotapes in that room. I don't want anybody recording anything. That is not something I want recorded. It has definitely changed. This journey really changes people. That has definitely changed. I am going to tell Donnie to bring batteries, to bring backup, to bring chargers. Here's my iPad. Here's your iPad. Here's the camera. Here's the phones. Record as much as you can. Just make sure it's from the waist up. <laughs> That's my only rule. But I definitely want as much of it as recorded as possible. I don't know what the hospital um, has to say about that. I don't know if they have rules. My hospital tour isn't until next month. But from everything I am hearing, most of them will let you record unless, you know, something crazy is going on. But for the most part, they will let you record. Number 18, natural or medicated? I don't know. I don't know. I really would like to try natural. I, I I actually just recently made that decision. I really would like to try natural. I have numerous reasons behind that. Um, one of the main reasons is, is epidurals scare the hell out of me. I have a bad back and the concept of a needle being put near my spine. And I, I you know what, I know they do it every day. I won't be the first. I won't be the last. But it scares me. So I really would like to try natural for numerous reasons, including that one. I have no idea what I'm capable of. I'm not going to be one of these people that's going to go in with a birth plan that says, this is what I'm doing and that's that. I, I'm going to write it in a fashion that says, this is what I would like to try. If it doesn't work out, here are the other things I'm not opposed to. So we're going to try natural, but we'll see what happens. Um, I've been starting to look into hypnobirthing and hypnobabies to see if maybe that is something that will help me. And the reason behind that is... Those concepts, they try to remove as much of the fear as possible. And I think that, I think it's me right there. I think that really is because I've always had fear of the unknown. I have no idea what to expect. I, I have watched a zillion birthing videos already. It's really helping me, believe it or not. Um, part of it, I think, is just, you know, the more you see of it, it's like, you know, I won't be the first, I won't be the last. Other people have done this, so can I. And... But then I started to see some of the hypnobirths, and they really are amazing, absolutely amazing. If you know, if you're okay with that, watching that kind of thing, type in live hypnobirth in the YouTube search engine, and some of them are just so natural and relaxed, and you know they say they feel pressure but not pain, and it's a really interesting concept. So I don't know. I'm looking into a lot of stuff like that, but I can tell you that I want to try natural, but I'm not opposed to other things if it doesn't work out. Number 19, do you think you will need a C-section? I have no idea. doesn't look that way right now. When I had my anatomy scan at 20 weeks, he was head down. But obviously between that point and when it's time to go into labor, anything can happen. We'll see. But as it stands right now, I shouldn't need a C-section. And hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> Number 20, will you cry when you hold your baby for the first time? Oh my God. This is obvious, right? I mean, I, I'm kind of tearing up a little bit just reading this question. Yes, I am sure I will bawl and bawl and bawl some more. Um, those birthing videos that I've watched when the baby is placed on the mother's chest, it, it just, it brings me to tears just watching that with somebody else because in the back of my mind, it's like, that's going to be me. And, and see, I'm tearing up already. So yes, I will cry. <laughs> Number 21, do you think dad will cry? Yes, absolutely. Um, my husband is an emotional kind of guy, and he is not afraid to admit it, so there you go. Number 22, do you know what you will say to the baby when you first hold him? Wow, I have no idea. Probably something along the lines of, we waited forever, and you're finally here. Or, here's, here's our little miracle. Or, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure whatever falls out of my mouth, I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you let emotions just take over and emotions is controlling what's coming out of your mouth in a happy event like that, what, what comes out of your mouth first is always just right. 
Number 23, are you scared about the labor? Well, I kind of already answered that a little bit when I got into the natural versus medicated. There are things about it that do scare me. <sighs> Giving birth has always been a fear from the very beginning, and I knew that going into this journey. I'm willing to stand up to that fear and possibly beat that fear before that time comes. That, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can push the fear out of my brain, push out all of, you know, the bad stories and crazy stories you hear about people going through childbirth and all the crazy things that can happen and if it hurts, if it doesn't hurt, that kind of stuff. Um, the ring of fire, all of that stuff. Oh my gosh, if I can push all of that out of my brain, I think I'll be good. <laughs> I think I will be okay. But is there fear about giving birth? Yes, there, there absolutely is, but I am getting better. Number 24, do you have names picked out? Yes, we do. Little boy's name is going to be Donald James, and we are going to call him DJ. Number 25, is the baby named after someone? Yes, yes he is. I, I, I highly suggest watching my name reveal if you haven't. The baby is essentially named after my husband's stepdad, also known as Papa, also known as Dad, because that's really what the wonderful man was. So yes, the baby is named after somebody, but again, I, I really suggest you watch my name reveal to get the full story on that one. Number 26, where was your baby conceived? In a petri dish. In Oak Brook, Illinois, if you want to get particular, at Reproductive Medicine Institute. Look them up. They're awesome. Number 27, have you felt the baby move? Yes, I have. I started feeling... A lot of questionable things, probably somewhere between 19, 20, 21 weeks. I have an interior placenta, so I didn't feel anything nearly as soon as a lot of people have. But the 19, 20, 21 weeks, it, it really was questionable things. I really had to be sitting there and really, really, really paying attention, saying, well, maybe that was something, maybe, maybe not. When I hit 22 weeks, that was the first time I got a kick that was like, whoa, that was definitely a baby kick. So 22 weeks. I am currently 26. I will be 27 by the time you see this video. And I can tell you as the days progress, I feel more and more and his kicks are getting stronger and it is awesome. I don't care if he wakes me up at 3 a.m. I don't care. Keep kicking little boy because that's great. <laughs> Number 28, do you have stretch marks yet? Well, Yes, we'll say yes. <laughs> I, I, I've i had stretch marks for a good chunk of my life just because I've gained weight, I've lost weight in large amounts. Um, but I would say somewhere around, I think it might have been week 14, I'm not positive on that, I started to get a couple of new ones and then I changed up what I was using to try and help prevent that. And I have not got any new ones since then. The ones that appeared at the beginning have of course moved up and gotten slightly stretched out because the belly is stretching out but I do not believe I've gotten any new ones or larger ones since then. Number 29, what was your first symptom? I, you know what, I was just recently asked this on Instagram and I had to look back because it just it was such a whirlwind and you know at the time it didn't feel like a whirlwind, it, it, it felt like things were dragging and you know, at that time we were trying to make sure everything was going to be okay. But now that I look back on it, it's like, this really feels like it's gone so fast. So I did have to look back. And my first symptom, I'm going to say, was bloat. I definitely felt bloat followed by exhaustion. But those of you who've been down the IVF, FET road, know that between the progesterone supplements and the actual transfer and the symptoms you can get from the transfer, both of those things have not been real symptoms. Who knows? They might have been from the meds. They might have been from my body recovering from the transfer. I don't know. But my first symptom was definitely bloat. Number 30, what's your baby's room theme? See that? Turtles. Those of you who've been watching me should have seen this coming a mile away. <laughs> Fee loves turtles. The theme is turtles. I have gotten turtle everything and I'm sure that will continue. <laughs> Number 31, what's the first thing you bought for baby? That's rough. I don't remember. Um, I guess that depends on what you consider to be a first. I have a stash that I've had for a long time. 
I've gotten pregnant numerous times before and I've miscarried. So throughout those journeys I have bought things here and there that I have saved. So if you go according to that, I'm sure the first thing I bought was probably a cute little outfit with a turtle on it. <laughs> Number 32, will you use cloth diapers? Sadly, I'm going to have to say no. I am not going to be able to stay home after my maternity leave. And I don't... I'm trying to figure out the right way to say this. I can't expect a care provider even though mine is going to be my sister-in-law, to do cloth diapering. Uh, my sister-in-law that is going to be the babysitter, she, she has four kids of her own, she, uh, all different ages. She's never done cloth diapering. I'm not going to, and I'm going to say burden, I'm not going to put that burden on her because unless you're all for it or unless, unless you've done it before or unless you're the mom and you're saying, I definitely want to do this no matter what the cost, uh, Unless it's one of those things, then it kind of can be a burden to your care provider. So I, I'm just not okay with doing that to her or to anybody else. So if I was a stay-at-home mom, I absolutely would cloth diaper. But my solution, the happy medium to that, is I believe I'm going to be using honest diapers. I know I definitely want to use one of the more natural brands of diapers. That's my happy medium. I want to go with Honest. I actually, there's, there's, see, there's some right here. <laughs> we have bought a few. So I, I am going to go with Honest diapers and hopefully they will work. Hopefully we won't have any problems with them because I think that's what would make me most comfortable. Number 33, breastfeeding or formula. I absolutely want to try breastfeeding. Um, hopefully the girls will cooperate. <laughs> we'll see. Number 34, what is your favorite pregnancy book? I only have one pregnancy book, and I believe it is called Day by Day. Day by Day Pregnancy. Um, there's, you literally get to read a page a day. It's, it's a pretty cool concept. Lots of, lots of really, really good information in there. I highly suggest looking into that book. It is called Day by Day Pregnancy. Number 35, what do you look forward to doing once again when you are no longer pregnant? You know, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't really even thought about that. Um, we were waiting for this time for so long that I, I... You know, if I had to pick something, it would probably be something stupid and little and nothing that I can't live without. But off the top of my head, I think I'm going to say iced tea. I, I'm, I'm a huge iced tea drinker. And yes, I know I can make it decaf, but all the varieties that I really like are not decaf, for iced tea at least. So I've kind of not done that as the weather has gotten uh, warmer. So I'll go with that. Again, it's not a big deal. I could give it up for the rest of my life for all I care. But um, if I have to pick something, I, I think I'm going to go with that because I can't really think of anything else. <laughs> Number 36, is he ready to be a daddy? Absolutely. My husband has been ready to have children for forever. Um, he wanted children before he even met me, before he even married me. So, yes, he is definitely ready to be a daddy. Number 37, are you ready to be a mommy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think we are down to 97 days until... Um, we get to see this little face if I go full term. So I, I have got a countdown in my head. I am definitely ready to be a mommy. That's it. 37 questions, the pregnancy tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you're out there and you're prego and you want to do this, I will put the questions below and um, send me a message. I'd love to watch yours. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in my next video.